Hello, it's me. I was wondering if you would like to talk about protein. Yeah? No? Maybe? Okay. All right, class, today we are here for a lesson on protein. Are you ready? No one's ready. I'm not ready. This is ridiculous. What's up, kitten cats? So in case you hadn't gathered from the intro clips, this is a video all about protein. So this video is inspired by the release of the newest select protein flavor, which is peanut butter cookie. This flavor is launching today when you are seeing it. So this is, again, the newest select protein flavor in our lineup. It's absolutely amazing. So we already had the chocolate peanut butter cup, which was delicious, but this one is a dedicated peanut butter flavor, just like the little peanut butter cookies that you eat when you're a little kid, or that when you're not a little kid you eat, but eat too many of. Before we get into the actual informative portion of the video, just so you know, you can get the insider price during the launch with my code EMILY, so that brings it down to $19.99 for a 27 serving tub, which is what this guy right here is. So again, brings it down to $19.99 during the launch, which is less than 75 cents per serving, which is crazy, but there is a six tub limit per customer this time, so you can only order six at a time. That is the new flavor of Select Protein, so let's get into a video all about protein. My favorite thing to do on this channel is to inform you guys, so I wanted to make, in tandem with you know the launch about the new protein flavor, I wanted to kind of put my twist on it and do more of an informative style post instead of just, hey, here's this protein, buy it. So let's get into it. Uh, and then just for reference, I am a sports nutrition specialist through the ISSN. I'm not a registered dietitian or anything of that nature. I do not have a degree in nutrition, but I do a lot of personal research. I'm also a sports nutrition, sports nutrition specialist, like I said. And yeah, so whether you want to trust me or not, that's up to you. I think I'm a pretty, pretty credible source. So let's go. Let's begin with some of the what of what protein is. So protein is one of the three main macronutrients among protein, fat, and carbs. Alcohol is technically a macronutrient, but it's not required to stay alive, so I'm not even gonna go there. Protein has four calories per gram compared to carbs that have four calories per gram as well. Alcohol that has seven calories per gram, and then fat that has nine calories per gram. But protein is a little bit unique. It's different from carbs and fats in that one, it's made according to instructions from our DNA, and then two, Protein still contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, just like fats and carbs do, but it also contains a nitrogen component that is usable by the body. Carbs and fats don't have that nitrogen component to them. And then protein is also comprised of amino acids, which we will talk a little bit about later because that's super important. So let's get into some of the why of why we need protein. So a lot of times, obviously I speak in the context of the athletic population, you know, the fitness genre, niche, whatever you want to call it. So we oftentimes associate protein with muscle building and muscle maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. But protein is responsible for so much more than that. You know, it's, it's a macronutrient. You need large quantities of it for some really important reasons. So we have cell growth, repair, and maintenance. That's not just with regards to skeletal muscle. That's with regards to pretty much everything in your body from the cells that line your gut to your bones to your skin, things of that nature. We're constantly, constantly, constantly in protein turnover, making new cells in our body at varying rates. Uh, another responsibility of protein is to create enzymes. Enzymes are catalysts for the chemical reactions that occur within our bodies, which there are quite a lot of. We're really cool little test tube experiment type things in that sense. You know, there's tons and tons and tons of chemical reactions that go on within our body in, within a day, within, you know, an hour. There's just so much that goes on inside of us. Uh, protein also acts as hormones. So fats are more predominantly seen as hormones. They're more responsible for hormone production, but there are some proteins that act as hormones as well. And then fluid and electrolyte balance is another job of proteins. Uh, if you are protein deficient, then you can develop what's called edema. I'll pop a picture up on the screen. It's just a lot of uncomfortable swelling that can lead to greater medical problems down the line. Not something you wanna deal with. And then another way that it acts in fluid balance, if you've heard of the sodium potassium pump that is often talked about with muscular contractions, uh, protein help balance the sodium potassium, protein helps balance the sodium potassium balance within your cells with transport proteins. And then another job of protein, there's a lot of jobs, proteins are these wonderful little multitaskers. Uh, protein is also involved in the pH balance within your body, so the acid-base balance within your body, um, as well as immune health, creating antibodies. And then protein can be used as an energy source, but it's only in unfavorable conditions. Uh, given that when it's used for an energy source, they're typically pulling it from things like skeletal muscle or your liver, things like that. It's only, you only use protein as an energy source when lipids and carbohydrates are not readily available, aka when they're too low. 
uh, this is not good because that's when you start to lose muscle tissue. And part of the reason for this is because there is no storage form of protein. So carbohydrates are stored as glycogen within the body and then fats are stored as triglycerides within the body. There is no storage form of protein. Um, so you, your body does not, and it's very energetically expensive to use protein and convert it into energy. So long story short, your body doesn't want to use it for energy. So that's a little bit about the function of protein within the body. You could go really deep with all the specifics of the different functions of protein within the body, but that's just kind of a basic overview of what protein does for us. It's a very important little nutrient, just like carbs and fats. But I mentioned briefly in the beginning about amino acids. So let's talk about those a little bit right now. So amino acids, they are essentially the building blocks of proteins. So with an amino acid, kind of the cellular structure, you have central carbon. Then you have the amine group, which is where the nitrogen component is, it's H2N. Then you have an acid group, you have another hydrogen, and then you have what's called a side chain. The side chain is what makes the different amino acids different. The side chain is the only thing that's different from amino acid to amino acid. The amine group, the hydrogen, the central carbon, and the acid group are essentially the same for all amino acids. Um, but anyway, that's a little bit too deep for the topic of this video. Um, there's 20 primary amino acids that are kind of in discussion with function in the human body. There's tons and tons and tons of different amino acids, but there's 20 main ones um, that most texts and most studies and everything discuss. Uh, and they're separated into non-essential amino acids and essential amino acids. So there are 11 non-essential amino acids, and what the non-essential amino acid means is that you don't have to consume it from your food because your body has the ability to manufacture sufficient amounts of it itself. Now with essential amino acids, you can kind of guess from the namesake, it's essential that we get them from our diet. That's because our body can't ma manufacture them at all or they can't produce them in sufficient quantities to maintain our health uh, and to carry out protein functions. So next let's talk about the importance of getting a wide variety of foods, wide variety of protein sources specifically. So the reason being, one, your diet should overall have a variety of foods in it. That's one of the components of a healthy diet. With protein specifically, you want to get a wide variety of protein sources so that you have a wide variety of amino acids consumed throughout your day. Uh, for example, foods like beef, chicken, soybeans, beans in general, those are high in the amino acid leucine, the essential amino acid leucine. Um, if you have somebody that's eating the exact same food every single day, exact same food source every single day, they're likely not getting a wide variety of amino acids or overall nutrients, which wouldn't be no bueno. Um, also in the case of protein sources, you want to get a variety of protein sources for varying vitamin and mineral benefits. So dairy foods, for example, are really high in calcium. Um, red meat is really high in B vitamins and iron and things of that nature. So you want to get a wide variety of protein sources, both for amino acid variety and also for vitamin and mineral variety in your diet. All right, so this last little section that I want to talk about is how much protein do you need to consume in a day? Uh, this is a very widely discussed, debated topic within the research community and the fitness community especially. Uh, so, and I'm by no means an authority on this topic whatsoever. I'm just kind of taking what I see through some of the research studies that I've looked at, as well as practical application with both myself and my clients, and kind of making what I feel is a reasonable conclusion from there. So take that for what you will. Uh, so the current RDA, which is the recommended daily allowance of protein, is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So for a 130 pound woman, that's 47 grams of protein per day. If you've been involved in the fitness community for any length of time, you're probably scratching your head right now, like that seems really low compared to what I see these people eating. And so, this is where things kind of start to get a little bit more confusing. Uh, the ACSM, which is the American College of Sports Medicine, and then the ISSN, which is the association that I have my certification through, the International Society of Sports Nutrition, they recommend that active adults consume between 1.2 and 1.4 and two grams per kilogram of body weight of protein per day. So for a 130 pound woman, that would be anywhere between 56 and 94 grams of protein per day. That's a pretty large margin of difference. Uh, so again, like I said, it's still a bit controversial. Um, and another thing that is an issue with this is people don't want to study bodybuilders. When people are doing studies, more often than not, the research that's gonna get funded is the research that you know targets an epidemiological problem like obesity. Um, so people don't, <laughs> people don't really want to do a ton of research on what are seen as st t like pretty healthy people. Um, and again, people don't wanna do research on bodybuilders. I wanna do research on bodybuilders, but other people don't, apparently. Uh, there was, I will link this article on examine.com below. Thank you to Jeff Nippert for helping me find this. Uh, I was texting him about trying to find something of this nature, but um, it's basically a review of some studies on protein recommendations in the bodybuilding community. I will link this from examine in the description box below if you would like to go read it for yourself. It's very digestible, even just for the general population. Um, I know that studies are like really hard and convoluted to read sometimes. 
So, there was a study with eight young natural male bodybuilders and they consumed between 0.1 and 3.5 grams per kilogram of body weight per day in protein. Um, so then, with this study, they, dedu they deduced a confidence interval of two to 2.5 grams per kilogram of lean body mass. So not body weight, but lean body mass. So your total body weight minus your body fat gets you your lean body mass. So this study is under review. They recommend, as a result of like those findings, they recommend anywhere from 1.2 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of total body weight per day, with the study average being 1.7 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. So you're probably like, well Emily, what the heck? That still leaves me with like this giant range of protein. So I didn't do the math for that one. Um, so for that same 130 pound woman, that would be anywhere between 56 grams and then 2.2 grams is body weight. That would be anywhere from 56 grams to 130 grams. Um, so that's still a large margin. Uh, the study average was 1.7 grams per kilogram. So that same 130 pound woman, which is about 47 kilos, would need around 80 grams of protein per day. So let's, you're, again, you're probably like, well, where does that leave me? That doesn't tell me jack squat. Um, so there is like a large amount of variance. Um, and again, I speak in the context of athletic populations, not necessarily general population, sedentary populations, obese populations, but athletic, you know, I'm speaking towards more so the bodybuilding and strength training community. Um, so for practicality, some people love protein, especially men, men in particular love protein. Women don't as much, but women in the fitness niche tend to like it more than just the average everyday woman do, does. Uh, so practicality, some people love protein more than other people do. Um, so I'm a person that I really love all sorts of protein sources. Like I love my select protein, obviously. Um, I love chicken, I love barbecue, I love ribs. Like literally there was, ever since I was a little kid, there was one family vacation when I was like eight, when I ate barbecue ribs every single night out of like a nine or 10 day vacation. By the last night, things were not going so well, but I powered through. But anyway, like I really like protein sources. Uh, some people don't. Some people just don't have that affinity for protein sources. So it, in the case of somebody that's less, you know, less of a protein lover. I do have I do have one client that she's like, I don't really like protein that much, uh, but I wanna still be like optimal with what I'm doing. So I put her on the lower end of the recommendation. Now, if I have somebody that freaking loves protein, I'll put them at the higher end of the recommendation. I myself stay at the higher end, even if a bit over of the recommendation. Um, just by a touch, not by a ton. Um, the red flags start to come when you see coaches putting girls on low calorie diets where their protein is at like, I've seen people have like 120 pound female consuming over 200 grams of protein per day. That's positively heinous, asinine, unnecessary. Like that's huge red flag, throw all the red, red flags everywhere. So my recommendation to you, if you are a protein lover, I would say, you know, err on the side of 2.2 grams per kilogram or one gram per pound of body weight. If you don't love protein so much, maybe stick more around the 1.7 grams per kilogram. That kind of lessens it down a little bit. Uh, and then also it's important to note here that overall calorie balance is the main driver of weight gain, loss, maintenance, etc. So if your protein intake throws you out of calorie balance, then you'll still either gain or lose weight, um, generally speaking. So calorie balance still does matter here. And then the last thing I do want to note with how much protein to eat, there's also some per meal uh, recommendation that I'll put the infographic up on the screen. Uh, this is from Jan Lemur. He's a really great guy on Twitter. He makes these awesome infographics regarding to, you know, just various topics in sports science. This one is timing and dist distribution of protein intake and its effect on muscle protein synthesis. And as you can see from this infographic, they compared pulse feedings of lower protein, so 10 grams per feeding, eight times every hour and a half. They did intermediate, so four times 20 grams every three hours. And they did bolus feedings of two times, two feedings of 40 grams every six hours um, at 12, in the 12 hour window after resistance training. So they found that the 20 gram intermediate feeding every three hours or so to be optimal for maxing out muscle protein synthesis and recovery. So it's important to know also, you know, aim for around 20 grams per feeding to make the most out of muscle protein synthesis. So that's a recommendation for you as well. Also protein is very satiating uh, because it takes, it's energetically expensive. Uh, to break down so it, you do get more of a satiety effect from consuming meals that are higher in protein than meals that are lower in protein So that's just another consideration to make as well when planning out your meals. So 
that's gonna kind of wrap this up for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did enjoy this video this breakdown of a macronutrient let me know and I can try and do other ones for carbs and fats but again this was in honor of the new select protein release uh, I hope you guys got something cool out of this video I hope you try this protein please try it it's so good I recommend it out of 10 uh, this is probably now my second favorite snickerdoodle is still my favorite but chocolate the frosted chocolate cupcake was after that but now this one just like knocked that out so sorry chocolate cupcake you're still delicious I still love you but anyway get your hands on that new select protein let me know if you learned something cool today and I will see you guys in the next video all right love you so much also, I'm really sorry that I talk fast. I'm tr trying to work on that. I've done that ever since I was a little kid, so I am trying to work on that. Love you guys. All right, kids, welcome. We are here today for a lesson on protein. Luna, do you want to learn about protein? <laughs> She's like, Mom, what the heck? <laughs>